Factor out the greatest common factor, or the GCF. In this example, we see that we have 2 times parentheses x minus 5 plus 3x times parentheses x minus 5. Now in this case, our GCF is a binomial. The GCF in this case would be that x minus 5. So when you're factoring out the GCF, you want to first write the GCF and then an open parentheses. So in this case, our GCF is that parentheses x minus 5 parentheses. Then I have my open parentheses, and what needs to go into the other parentheses is what's left after I divide out the GCF. So when I divide the GCF out of the first term, I end up getting 2, and out of the second term, I get plus 3x. So this is what I get when I factor out the GCF, and the GCF is a binomial. Pause and try. So again, our GCF is a binomial, y plus 4, parentheses, x squared plus 6. Now, when we're factored by grouping, you need to have four terms. So factoring by grouping, when you have four terms, the process that you take is you're going to use grouping symbols. Now, grouping symbols in mathematics is parentheses. So when we want to factor by grouping, we're going to group. And how it works is you're going to group using parentheses the first two terms together and then group the last two terms together. Now notice that that sign in the middle needs to stay outside of the second grouping symbols. That's very important that you group the first two, leave the middle sign out, and group the last two. Then the next step is to factor out the greatest common factor out of the first grouping and the greatest common factor out of the second grouping. So when I look at the first grouping, my greatest common factor is going to be 3x squared. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to factor it out of each term. And remember, when you factor it out, you're dividing each term by the GCF whatever's left goes inside the parentheses. So when I take it out of the 6x to the third, I'm left with 2x. When I take it out of the 9x squared, I'm left with minus 3x. And I close the parentheses. And now that middle sign needs to come down, and then I'm going to find the GCF of the 4x minus 6. The GCF of 4x minus 6 is going to be the 2, and then I'm going to divide it out of each term, and whatever's left will go inside the parentheses. So I'm left with 2x minus 3. Now notice here, I have that common binomial. Because I have a common binomial of 2x minus 3, I can factor that out as a GCF. So now I factor out that common binomial, that 2x minus 3, and then whatever is left, I factor and put it inside the second parentheses. So when I divide 2x, 2x squared times 2x minus 3, I divide the 2x minus 3 out, I'm left with 3x squared plus 2x. So now I have this factored by grouping into 2 factored binomials. Pause and try. So again, grouping the first two terms, leaving that middle sign out, and grouping the second two terms. Factoring out the GCF of the first two terms, and what's left is going to be that 4x plus 1. Bringing down that middle sign, Factoring out the GCF of the last two terms, and I'm left with the 4x plus 1. I have a GCF of a binomial, 4x plus 1. I'm going to factor that out, and what's left is going to be the 2x squared plus 3. Now, when you're factoring by grouping, 
So I'm going to do the factoring by grouping, and I want you to notice here, when I group the first two terms together, and I group the last two terms together, what's on the outside, or what's in the middle, that middle sign, is a minus. Well, whenever that middle sign is a minus, you have to change that last sign. So whatever the last sign is, in this case it's plus 9, when I do the grouping, I have that minus on the outside, I have to change that plus to a minus. So when you're factoring by grouping, and your middle sign is a minus or a negative, you need to switch the sign of your last term to whatever the opposite sign is. So in this case, the opposite sign of a plus is a minus. And now we're going to follow the same steps. You're going to factor out the GCF of the first two terms, and then you're going to factor out the GCF of the last two terms. But don't forget to bring down that middle sign. It's very important that that middle sign comes down. I'm factoring out the GCF of the last two terms, and now you see we have that common binomial. So you have to be very careful. If you would have forgot to change that last term sign, we would have had a plus inside that last binomial, and we wouldn't have had the same binomials. Now because they're the same, I can factor that out, and whatever's left would go into the other binomial. So now this is factored by grouping, and when that middle sign is a minus. Pause and try. So again, grouping. You see that that middle sign's a minus. I have to change the end sign to its opposite. I'm factoring out the GCF of the first two terms, bringing down that minus, factoring out the GCF of the second two terms, and you see here, the GCF of x minus 3 is 1, and I need to have that value there because when I factor out that common binomial, I need to make sure that I have that number in the second binomial. So I end up getting this x minus 3 times 4x squared minus 1. So now, using the idea of factoring by grouping and factoring a trinomial that has a coefficient in front of x squared other than 1, we're going to be factored by grouping. A key note is when you factor by grouping, you always have to have four terms. So we're going to have to create the four terms, and I'm going to show you the steps to do that. So we're going to factor a trinomial that has a coefficient other than 1 in front of x squared by using factor by grouping. So the first step is you're going to need to multiply the coefficient of x squared times the constant or the number on the end. So you multiply in this case a times c, and then you're going to find factors that would add up to b. So that product that you get from a times c, you're going to look for factors that will add up to your b value. Once you find those factors, you're going to take those factors, you're going to rewrite the middle term, and you're going to rewrite it so it's two terms adding the x to the factors that you found in step one, so that you're going to have four terms. And then once you have four terms, you can use the factor by grouping. So let's see what this looks like. So in this case, I have a, a trinomial that I'm going to factor. The coefficient in front of x squared is not 1, and it's not a GCF that can be factored out. So I'm going to use factor by grouping to factor this trinomial. So the first thing I need to do is I need to take the coefficient of x squared, which is my a, and multiply it to the constant, or that number on the end, which is my c. So I take 2 times positive 15, and I'm going to get 30. Now I have my product 30, and I want factors of 30 that are going to add up to a negative 13. Now remember, when you multiply two things together and you get a positive, but when you add them together, you get a negative, that means both of your 
that uh, both of your factors will be negative. So when I'm looking for factors of 30 that add up to a negative 13, I find that it's going to be 10 times 3 is 30, and 10 plus 3 will be 13. So the factors that I'm going to use here will be 10 and 13. Now that I have my factors, I can rewrite the middle term by adding x to the 10 and the 3. So I'm going to rewrite the middle term. And the middle term is going to turn into a negative 10x minus 3x. Now remember, if I combine like terms here, I'm going to end up getting that negative 13x. So I didn't change the value of anything. All I did was create it so that it's four terms, and I can factor by grouping. Now I'm going to factor by grouping. I'm going to group the first two terms together. I'm going to group the last two terms together. Now notice here when I factor by grouping, I have that negative or that minus sign in the middle. So that means I'm going to have to change that last term. So I'm going to have to change it to the opposite sign. So remember when you factor by grouping, if you have a minus in the middle, don't forget that step. And now I'm going to factor out the GCF of the first two terms, which is 2x and I'm left with x minus 5, bringing down that minus sign, and then I factor out the GCF of the second two terms, which is 3, and I get x minus 5 as my left binomial, and now you see I have that common binomial. So I'm going to factor out the common binomial, whatever's left goes into the other binomial, and this is my factor trinomial. So 2x squared minus 13x plus 15 will factor to x minus 5 times 2x minus 3. So again, you're finding factors of the a times c that will add up to your b value, and then that b value is going to be broken out into the two terms that the factors that work. Pause and try. So you see here, 6 times 6 is 36. I need factors of 36 that will add up to 13. My factors are 9 times 4 is 36, and 9 plus 4 is 13. So I'm rewriting that middle term using those factors and including the x. So I have 6x squared plus 9x plus 4x plus 6, and now I'm going to factor by grouping, leaving that middle sign out. Now I get the GCF of the first two terms, the GCF of the second two terms, and you have the common binomial. So you factor out that common binomial, what's left goes into the other, and this is how this trinomial would factor. I get x or 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 2. Pause and try. So I factor, I multiply the first term to the last term, or the coefficient of x squared to the constant. And be careful here, because you end up with 2 times a negative 15, which is a negative 30. So now I need factors of a negative 30 that will add up or subtract to 1, or a negative 1. So those factors will be a negative 6 and a positive 5. Negative 6 times 5 is a negative 30. When I add them together, I get a negative 1. So I'm going to rewrite that middle term using these factors, and then I'm going to factor by grouping. I group the first two terms together, leave that middle sign out, and I group the last two terms together. Factoring out the GCF, and then you see I get that common binomial of x minus 3. I'm going to factor out the x minus 3. What's left in the other binomial will be 2x plus 5.